Welcome to this walkthrough of the Mithruna Test Engine Anniversary Release. This is the 10-year anniversary of the last public release of the original Mithruna engine. This is a limited public release and so requires a password for access. The link and password are available to anyone who asks. Just hit me up on Discord or message me directly. See the description for more information. When you get to the page, just pick the release that's appropriate for your platform. There's an executable release for Windows and Linux and a platform-independent jar. Once you've downloaded it, extract the files. Once the files are extracted, you'll be able to navigate to the specific directory where the executable exists. On Windows, this is going to be under the Mithruna client directory directly. On Linux, there'll be a bin subdirectory with a script. Once the application is started, you'll be able to pick different screen settings, full screen, different resolutions. Um, keep the bits per pixel at 32, leave gamma the way it is, go ahead and start. Once the application comes up, you'll see this kind of scary warning window. This will be where I'll put specific release notes about each of the new test engine builds. There's some instructions on the upper right on how to start a game. For this walkthrough, we're gonna go ahead and follow those instructions and create a new world. So we set single player. We'll create a new world, we'll give it a name. Right now it doesn't accept spaces, that's a bug. Uh, put a seed in, we'll get a preview to see what the world will look like and generate. So it'll create a world. And then once we get in, you can create a character. Most of these settings other than name are just placeholders. Um, it doesn't matter what race you pick or gender you pick. It'll always be the female model for now because that's the only model that I have in the game. Uh, so go ahead and select your demo girl and start the game. Now there's no progress bar yet. So the first time you generate a world, you're gonna spend a lot of time looking at this particular screen. Right now, there's a good chance to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll also point out that the keys and the mouse in the lower left corner are not part of the game. That's just an overlay for while I record the video so you can see what keys and stuff I'm pressing. Here I'm just kind of looking around while we see the far world load in. Um, in the lower right corner you can kind of see a status of the background tasks that are running that are loading that world in. You can see the trees are loaded but the far train hasn't loaded. In the meantime we'll run down the stairs here so we can get down to the ground level. You can see the shiny marble and the nice cool flames. Sometimes when we look down, you can kind of see into the model's chest. That's temporary. Uh, the camera's not properly hooked up to the head yet, so as the model moves around, the camera doesn't move forward where it's supposed to be yet. Here we're going to see that right-clicking will place a block. Um, Left-clicking will remove them. There's a little bit of a lag right now because the background generation is still happening. During the initial world build, uh, there'll be some slowness while you see that progress down on the right. This is basically calculating the far buildings, which is a little slower than it will be in the final game just because of how they're laid out. So we placed and removed some blocks. That works just like the old Mithruna did. E will pop up a temporary block selector menu. This will allow you to select the material and the block shape. Here we're going to select cobble and, and a vertical cylinder. I'll place a few of these and remove them again. Um, there's a slight bug with the normal mapping in these particular shapes, but they work. So let's head over to a different area where we can see a little bit more and have a clear space. And I'll show off some of the other features. Tab will open the player menu. This gets you access to the inventory, the map, and the blueprints. Um, the map shows where we are, and that's the little guy in the middle there. And we're kind of looking up towards a lake. Each map square represents about a kilometer, so we can see quite a bit of the world just from this view. Next, we're going to take a look at the blueprint editor. Um, we can select different items, we can edit them and copy them. There's help over here on the upper right. This opens automatically the first time you open the blueprint menu. You can close it with the close button, or you can open it up again with the help next time you open it up. So we'll select one and we're going to copy it because I'm going to change this chair into a bench. There's also instructions here on how to use here. The uh, flashing cursor is where you're going to place a block. And anytime you overlay and you can see that X cursor, that's where you would remove a block if you clicked the left button. This help window works the same as the others. You can open or close it as you need to. A and D will move the platform left and right. WS moves it up and down, kind of at an angle. In the upper right, there's a block selector menu similar to the one in the game. Um, we won't be using it in this particular thing because I'm using C to copy blocks that are already there. So if you look in the lower left, you'll see a lot of C, and then I right click and then C, and then right click as I choose different block types and place them. Here I've accidentally removed one I wanted to keep, that panel in the middle there, and so I can undo and I can get it back again. And then I'll have it available to select with the C. So we're gonna finish up the bench here with C, right click, C, right click, C, right click, lots of C, right click. We'll flesh out the rest of the bench. When that's done, I'll go up and rename the object and the blueprint name so that they'll better fit in my menu and, and it'll be obvious when I'm placing them around what they are. 
that's in the upper middle right there. So yep, bench looks good, doesn't look good carved. Here we go, I'll rename the blueprint name, that's how it appears in my menu, and the object name, that's how it'll appear pretty much anywhere else in the game, like uh, right-click menus and so on. If we can see in my menu here that it shows up as my bench, and that's pretty much the blueprint menu. So let's press I to open the inventory and explore that a little bit. Again, we have another help menu. We can read about how to use the inventory. If you right click on an object, you get its context menu. If you hover over an object, you'll see what its name is. Book, it's the object tool, there's an ax, there's a sword, and that the build one is the only one left. Just like the other help menus, this one can be closed and opened as needed. For the usable tools, if you right click on them and use their look menu, it'll also provide additional instructions just on that particular tool. So here are the instructions about the build wand. We can also get instructions about the object tool, which is what we'll be using next. So here's how we can place objects and so on and so forth. So let's equip the build wand and then we'll close the inventory and we'll use this to place some objects around. In the lower middle, you can see that the chair is selected right now. So if we right click, we'll place a chair. Pressing and holding the right mouse lets you drag it around, so you can move the object around. Like old Mithrun, it tries to prevent you from putting it in the ground, which makes placing things on the ground easier. You can rotate it by moving around it, or you can also use the middle mouse button to rotate it in a fine-tuned sort of way. I think I'll place a few more objects to make sort of an outdoor office here. Oops, I'll put my desk down and get that situated right with the chair. And then uh, once I get the chair where I want it, now let's see if we can select our bench by using the middle mouse button to select the bench and then right click to place the bench. Set that where we want. So now we have a nice little outdoor office. With the object tool selected, you can right click on an object to bring up its context menu. Look will show you details about the object. You can copy the blueprint in your local blueprints or delete the object or just cancel to close the menu. We'll go ahead and place some chairs down and I'll show you we can delete them. Right click, delete, right click delete, and so on. The object menus will have more features in the future as the game expands. Even original Mithrun had more options here and those will be added later. Pressing F5 will put us in third person view and we can see Mithruna girl there in all her glory uh, wearing her backpack. We'll run along. She looks a little janky with the fast animation because she doesn't have an actual run animation yet. F5 to go through first person mode, which will do a little bit more exploring here run over to the cottage and then over that hill. Let's stop in the cottage and take a look around here. Looks a little bare. Maybe we can put one of our benches down. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Oh yeah, fully furnished now. When world generation is a little farther along, the houses will be populated with furniture and people and so on. So here we are at the top of our hill. Um, it's a small hill, but we can see a little bit further in the distance. Uh, we'll Go into a third person to really get some perspective. You see the spawn tower off there, our little hut. For the time being, Q will let you fly up straight up in the air, and we'll go back into first person. We'll fly up in the air and we'll kind of look around. So it'll give us a higher view of the surroundings. We can really see sort of the effect of the far terrain, and we can see buildings off in the distance that we might go explore someday. So let's go and pop up the settings. You can see that there's some rendering settings. Eventually there'll be more and there's the debug settings. You can turn off the HUD, which is good for taking photos. There's detailed quality settings on the right and you can turn on wireframe and so on and change the number of polygons in the far train to enable local blocks, which lets you see what the far train looks like without local blocks. You can enable, disable far trees, far structures and so on. Or you can turn the far train off completely with the terrain level. And then we can bump out the you know, blocks clip which basically makes it like old Mithruna. I currently have the clip maxed out at I think seven. And one more, it would be seven. And that's like 224 meters, which is farther than Mithruna allowed you to clip. Um, we can kind of see what it would look like with and without terrain that way. You can see wireframe for the far terrain, which lets you see kind of the effect of what the quality settings would do for you. And so that's the basic walkthrough of the new Mithruna engine on the anniversary release. Uh, hit me up if you would like to try it out, and I'll give you the password and the link. Or just join us on the SimSilica Discord. 
If you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons. Uh, they really help me get through sometimes when I'm feeling especially lonely. Software development's a lonely game. So consider joining if you'd like to help out. Otherwise, just thanks for watching.